Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Money Markets and Mindset podcast. I'm uh, hanging out with my good man, Coach Sutton. And hey. uh, we, you know, we were just kicking it before we cut the mic on. And we were just talking about crafting your trading game plan and why that's just so important to trade your plan and not somebody else's plan. But then we got to thinking, like most people might not even know or understand how to create a trading game plan, why they need a trading game plan, and like where do they start? So I know you've been talking to some of our students. We've been doing um, some one-on-ones with Elite, and then some of our students who have been uh, more active in the forum, we kind of did some bonus one-on-one calls to just say, how you doing? What are you struggling with? So share some of the insights without revealing anybody's identity, right? But what are some of the things you're seeing coming up in those calls with respect to crafting their trade and game plan? That's great, Jason. And, and part of that goes into treating your trading like a business. And, and you know how it is. A lot of people relate the stock market to, to gambling. And so let me just pull on that analogy a little bit, because let's let's look at sitting down and playing poker. You got the same 52 cards. We got the same rules. But when my friends call me and say, let's go play poker and it's a $20 buy-in, I know that's $20 of entertainment because by the end of the night, they're going to take all of my $20. Because the people that have a, a business plan that are professionals at what they do, they say, you know, they ante up, they got to have some skin in the game, and then they fold. They look at their cards, they look at the probability, they do the math, and they fold. And they say no to a lot of hands until they look at it and they do the math, they do the logic, they do the probability, and then they go in. And so from a trading perspective, a lot of people are just casually playing poker that don't understand the math and the business they're in, which is going the distance, which is having a process and a plan. And so that's that's been a real differentiator in the conversations I've had with a lot of our students that are saying, I've made some money, I've had successes, look at this streak, and but I'm not getting the consistent, repeatable processes that I could say I'm a business owner, I'm a professional trader. I think what I'm hearing is we the new, you know, you know, when you see a gambling commercial and at the end and be like, if you have a problem gambling, please call 1-800-GAMBLERS-ANONYMOUS. I, bet, I think what you just said is we the new 1-800-GAMBLERS-ANONYMOUS, guys. We, <laughs> we basically here to help you break the chain and not lose your house and not run up debt on your credit card. But we're here to help you uh, basically get a hold on your <laughs> <laughs> gambling addictions and have a have a real game plan. No, I'm I'm joking. I cause I just I just like having fun with this stuff. But the reality is though, most people do treat the stock market like a Las Vegas casino table and they come in with no game plan and they're just like, man, I just want to make some money today. And they don't really take a step back and say, what, how much money do I want to make? By when? More importantly, they don't even ask how much am I willing to lose? More important than that, they don't ask, how can I mitigate losing anything at all? They're just like, we're going to make some money today. So what can we find to trade? And I know you have this analogy that's like, look, yeah. you know, tell us the boxing analogy because I, I love it. It's like it's yours. And I love how you kind of explain the boxing analogy like about do they want to get in the ring with what type of fighter people want to get in the ring with? Yeah, that, and I think it, it really hits home because if I'm a professional fighter, I want to go the distance. I want to fight in my weight class. I want to have a high probability of being successful. I don't want to step in the ring with, with Mike Tyson right out of the gate. So they list your height, your weight, and your reach. So what I, what I would relate that to is how much money do you have? Like, what's your weight? Like, what can you withstand? And those punches, like, what type of volatility what type of uh, punches can you absorb and where do i need to give it room to still be in the ring to be a contender and if their reach is 36 inches i need to be 37 inches away so i don't get punched and the question is is like and i i look at this for stocks that throw six dollar punches in a day so that means i need to be able to absorb a six dollar hit 
just to stay in the fight. And if you can't absorb that in your trading account, then there's no shame in going and trading a dollar fifty punch. Hey, go trade a GE, trade an AIG. They throw fifty cent punches, they throw dollar punches, and you can you can absorb that as a fighter and be a professional because you don't want to go out in the first round. You don't want to step in the ring with a six dollar fighter, and now you're you know you might have some big wins. You might throw that uppercut, have, and you're like, wow, look, I'm a prize fighter, heavyweight champion. But a professional fighter is going to be like, yeah, you hit me, but I, I was able to absorb it, and they'll come back, and, and eventually they're going to win. And I think to kind of bring it home or bring it full circle, like Tesla yesterday. So I, I sold my Tesla stock, got out of the profit. But when I look at Tesla, Number one, it hit ran up to about almost three hundred dollars. I'm pulling up the chart. I know you guys on the podcast can't see it if you listen to the audio only, but Tesla, in fact, literally, it ran up to just right at three hundred dollars on the chart. And so, if you look at where Tesla ran up to, running up to three hundred dollars, look at how far it fell. It fell from three hundred down to 260 basically and so what we're talking about is that's a 40 dollar punch okay <laughs> so <laughs> if you if you didn't if you didn't get the analogy the first time i hope this drives it home that's a 40 dollar punch that's like mm, coming for your head so if you don't have a bank account if you don't have the wherewithal to stomach a 40 dollar drop you shouldn't be trading the stock that throws $40 punches in two days, right? Because that's what it did. It threw a $40 punch in two days. Now, if you look on the flip side, about what, five, six, seven days before that, it ran up $40. And so a lot of times people are just looking at the upside. I can make $40 a share if I could get 100 shares. Boom. I'm in at $4,000, right? Off, you know, you get 100 shares, maybe you pay $26,000 for it. But but when that bad boy dropped $40, your stomach hurt. You're like, mm, mm. Yeah, you that's know, a what? Price point, right? That's, that, <laughs> that's so a nice use. That's hurt, a used right? car that's for your 16 year old teenager. <laughs> what was you saying though? Well, I'm saying like, we'd like to talk about the prize money. You know, that's a big purse, right? If you're thinking, taking boxing, like the, you know, Floyd Mayweather, it's like, Hey, those, those are big you know, big punches, but you need to work your way up. And so going back to this trading business, trading within your weight class, knowing who you are, there's a lot of successful business models out there. Uh, I think of like Morton's and McDonald's, right? Morton's fine steakhouse. I know I'm going to spend a hundred dollars a plate. I know I'm going to sit there for three hours. I know I, you know, I know what I'm going to get. And that's a fine business model, but McDonald's, it's also fine, multi-billion dollar corporation. But I know when I go through, I'm not gonna have, you know, I'm not gonna be wowed, I'm not gonna get the greatest service, I'm not gonna have the fresh, but I know what I'm getting. And the reason that's important is when you're setting up your trading business, you need to know who you are. You need to know what stocks you're looking at. You need to know what, how much money it costs to sit down at the table. You know, cause when that bill comes, you gotta be able to pay it. And you need to know the expectations. And that will help you be more of a professional. And it will help you be a specialized professional because here, here's an important one, Jason. Strategy is knowing what you are not going to do. Absolutely. And and knowing what you're not going to do is like it's knowing I'm not going to jump in the ring with a stock that punches 40 bucks. So let's give people another analogy or, or, or let's take this analogy a little further. So it's like you like electric vehicles, you like Tesla, but you don't have Tesla money or you don't have a uh, Tesla risk, right? You can't risk a 40 point drop. I just put up a chart of Ford Motor Company. Now I get it. Ford isn't like the leader in EVs or anything like that. You could also swing over to GM. What is important though, regardless if you're looking at, and for those watching on YouTube, I'll pull it up live, but regardless if you're looking at Ford, or you're looking at GM, here's the point, is that each stock, if you're looking at Tesla, 
And this is why it's so important to understand how to read charts. If we look at Tesla, we could see that Tesla was in a nice uptrend and probably the, the right uh, technical analysis to use for that would be the moving average, right? Pull it back to the 10, it broke it for a minute, but bounced off the 20, pull it back to the 10, again, bounce. Pull it back, now it's at the 20, perhaps we get a bounce again. Point is, we identified a pattern on a fighter that throws $40 punches. Now, you're like, I don't have Tesla money. No problem. The moving averages won't work on Tesla, but when we switch over to, uh, you know, just doing our horizontal support and resistance lines, look, they're both fighting in the same gym, right? Different weight classes, though. And so now you have a pattern, boom, predictable, repeatable pattern on GM. And so you can get in the ring with somebody that, what, it went from 32 up to 40. That's a what? That's an $8 punch, $8 up, and could potentially punch $8 down. A lot different from being in the ring with a $40 puncher. Then you like, hey, Jason, I got less money than that. I just want to be involved in the market. You guys know I'm not a big fan of Ford, but it doesn't matter if I'm a fan of Ford. What matters is if we see a predictable, repeatable pattern in our weight class, which AKA in your financial class, right? But here's the thing, Ford went from where? $11 all the way up to $15. That is a $4 punch. So that's like half of GM. So we went from a $40 punch down to an $8 punch down to a $4 punch. Here's what I want people to understand and take away. Yeah. You could have made money. You could made money on Tesla when it punched up from here and punched up from there. Meaning if you're not watching this live, you could have made money on Tesla when it went from 240 to 280 and then made money when it went from 266 to 300. However, different pattern, same game. You could have made money on GM when it went from 32 up to 40, about the $40 area, eight bucks. You could have made money on Ford when it went from $11 up to 15. Technically you would have got out at 14, about a $3 range. So, so, so what is, what's the point here? What's the point here? Here's where I think I want to make sure people understand and get. Number one, you got to understand what you not go trade. And then you also got to understand your weight class. If you, are you heavyweight, middleweight or lightweight? <laughs> That's the best way I could put it. Tesla heavyweight. GM, middleweight, Ford, lightweight, all making cars. So they all in the same game, same industry. So knowing your weight class, knowing, and not being confused about where you're at. Then the second thing is, so you know what you're not going to do. You're not going to come in as a lightweight and try to fight in the heavyweight round because that can get you okay. knocked out, a.k.a. you can lose a ton of money in your account. But I think the other thing that people got to understand is back to this game plan, Notice with each stock that we pulled up, if you could see the video, but even if you can't, the game plan for Tesla was to find the uptrending stock and take and take advantage of it. The game plan for Ford and GM was different because they are sideways channeling stocks. And so you need a different game plan for sideways channeling. And as we started this conversation with, most people don't have a game plan at all. They don't know if they're looking for uptrending stocks sideways channeling stocks that they're looking for stocks to play to the short to the downside and then they don't know what weight class they should be looking for the stocks in which ultimately leads people to guessing gambling putting more at risk than they really should have and not being able to do what i believe is the number one skill of trading which is read the chart to determine the low risk time to buy and the low risk time to sell can i get an amen <laughs> preach on brother <laughs> So and, that, that's my like, thoughts. So mirror that with what you're seeing on the cause. Like what else, you know, anything you want to add to that? And what are you seeing from the cause in addition to what we just talked about? Yeah, it, it comes down to that focus because there's so many uh, distractions. There's a lot of things you could do in the market. A lot of, you know, thousands of companies you could go trade. 
And it really helped the community say, you know what, I just need to have my catalog of usual suspects that I know really well that fit my profile and then get really good at saying no and be able to compare them and say, well, this one's, it's pretty, but it ain't beautiful. It's not my, you know, this one beats it because, and being able to do a comparison because it's a lot of research and a lot of waiting. And once you've said no, you then are able to recognize a really good opportunity that fits your profile, your cash flow needs, your risk tolerance, and your weight class, so that you can then go in and step in the ring and, and trade punches and have a risk management process that you're comfortable with so you stay and go the distance. So you said on a couple of things that I think a lot of people, and, and I was like this too, right? So I don't want to make it seem like, look, all oh, y'all listen to this, get it together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I was like this too, where it's just like, you just said something where you said, there's a lot of stocks to trade. Because there are a lot of stocks to trade, there's also a lot of noise in the market. And what does a lot of noise look like? You're listening to CNBC. You're in the Reddit forum. Your friend just told you about a Dogecoin. You heard Tesla just miss earnings. You also heard Apple came out with some new goggles or some headphones or some Apple Vision. Oh, you just heard Shopify created a new e-commerce platform. Oh, Visa's doing good. They just released earnings. Oh, something's going on with the grain and the wheat. The prices went up because of Russia, Ukraine. Maybe you should short food stock. Like there's so much noise in the market that most people, including me, I used to be like this. I didn't stop and say like, what are the stocks that I want to focus on? And then when I find those and I focus on them, what does focus mean? Because I don't like using general terms. Focus means I looked at the chart. I kind of read some articles, understand the business they're in, understand the economic environment yeah. that we're in. And now I'm saying, I like this either right here, right now, or I'm saying, I like this, but I don't like it right here, right now. Let me set an alert and let me wait until the price comes to a price I like both on the chart and from a risk reward perspective. And then I'll strike when the iron is hot. If you don't understand what I said, let's put it in another layman's term and say, you should be doing research and waiting is <laughs> what you should be really doing. And that will help you avoid the noise and being scatterbrained and saying, oh, maybe I should be in this. Maybe I should be in that. Maybe I should be in this. What helps you sleep well at night is knowing that you did the research. It's knowing that you know your risk reward uh, profile and the profile of the stock and knowing that if the stock does this, meaning more importantly, if it goes against what you thought it was going to do, because everybody like to look at the stock and be like, I think it's going up. I'm going to make $10,000. It's like, that's cool. But what helps you sleep at night is saying, I like the chart. I like it right here, right now. I know the fundamentals in the economic environment of why I'm buying it or why I'm buying puts on it, why I'm buying calls or puts. And knowing if, if, if my thesis is wrong, whether that be technical or fundamental thesis is wrong, here's what I'm going to do next to limit my risk or turn a losing trade into a winning trade. And that that is when you get to sleep well at night. Most people don't sleep well at night because it's like, it's going up. How do you know? I just feel it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that goes back to, to the probabilities because the stock market, it'll go up, it'll go sideways, and it'll go down tomorrow, every day. The And I can't impact that. My, my one contract, my 10 contract, it's not moving the market. It feels personal, but I'm not. And if I have a plan that says if it goes up and I had a profit target for that 10%, that $2 price move, I need to give myself permission to happily close out the trade. But what if it keeps going? That wasn't your trading plan. Plan your trade, trade your plan. So if you were happy with it when you, before you had money committed to it, take it <laughs> and if it goes sideways and it keeps going you're like hey it's it's 
consolidated here at this price action historically for eight days. Well, if you get to the 12th day, you gave it a little extra because it's not going to be exactly. And it gets to that 12th day of just consolidation. Maybe you're waiting too long and you're like, all right, I, I had put that. I said it, it's traded sideways for too long. Great. Exit the trade. You were right. Congratulations. If it goes down and triggers your, your risk management, that target that, that you said, if this is no longer true, it's no longer staying at support, it's no longer confirming the moving averages, it's no longer, and then it triggers that, congratulations, you were right, because you knew it could go up, you knew it could go sideways, and you knew it could go down, and you circled all the way around it. So no matter what, you have a 100% chance of being right, no matter what, if no you plan what. for all three scenarios and everyone listening to this, tell me this, tell me if you've ever said this before, because somebody said this to us earlier, stock went up to resistance where they should be selling and taking profit. They sold, they took profit. Stock went a little bit higher. And they're like, I always get out when it could go, when it goes higher. And I'm thinking like, that is the wrong thing to say to yourself. I've seen that so many times where people say, I should have stayed in it longer, or I always get out when it goes a little bit more higher. And I'm thinking, and, they, and, and they'll ask, they'll come and say like, hey, Jason, how do I stay? Like, how do I, how do I like know when to stay in longer so that I can capture all the upside? Yeah. And I'm like, let's be real. What you really asking me is how do you get out at the absolute last minute when the stock is done going up? And as soon as you hit the sell button, everybody else better look out because the stock is going to turn around and go down. It's absolutely done going up. That is the most ridiculous. It's not a ridiculous question, but when I put it like that, it sounds ridiculous, right? You're asking me, how do I know the perfect time? And so there is no perfect time, but there is a perfect game plan. And that perfect game plan should never include, I am just going to get every last drop and penny out of this stock. Right. That is a horrible game plan. And it's not one that you can consistently make money on for the long term. And so when you get out, if it keeps going, it's, you could reevaluate it as a new trade. Has it? entered into a new pattern? Am I using a different indicator to determine how long I'm going to stay in this new trade? But once it hits either your I'm wrong level and you have to get out and take a small loss or your I'm right level on the upside, whatever happens to the stock after that, you made the right choice, which is to get out no matter what happens to the stock after that. But the worst thing you could do is get this blessing called profit <laughs> okay, because profit is a blessing. Ask anybody who's consistently lost money. They're like, yes, please, somebody come bless me with some of that profit. Right? <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> you get this blessing called profit. How dare you go? I'm upset. I should have stayed in longer. I could have made more. Really? Usually the trading guys are like, give it all back then. <laughs> right? If you see somebody watch you go all the way up, and they're like, I'm up. I made a lot of money. Why'd you come all the way down and then hold on? Then what's the famous saying they have after that? They're not asking me, uh, how do I stay in and get all the profit? They come to the coaching call and be like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, I should have sold it when it was up. <laughs> Singing a whole nother tune. If now. only it goes back to, to you know, neutral. I, I swear <laughs> I'll never do it again. <laughs> right i'm playing the violin right so now now they're singing a whole new melody not how do i stay in and then make the most money they're like i don't know why i always do this i had a profit i should have took it right which is you know what i got a solution for you just buy one of our shirts and just look down at the shirt anytime you're not sure what to do when you got some profit because you never go broke taking a profit co Sutton, anything you want to add before we wrap this up Drop the mic on that one, Jay. That's 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 the that's the headline, man. That's it. So look, you don't become a five year millionaire by not taking profit. The whole program is designed for us to take ten percent profit, one trade a month 
for five years, that's 60 trades. You need to take one a month, take 10% profit, or 60 trades, however you can squeeze them in at a 10% profit, starting with a certain amount of money, become a five-year millionaire. The whole key is to take profit. Never said you get there by milking stocks dry and getting out at the absolute top when there's nothing left in the stock to give. We didn't say we were going to give you the key to be Moses, Jesus, Allah, whoever you believe in that you think can pick the absolute top of stock. So remember, you never go broke taking a profit and you never get to become a five-year millionaire if 10% ain't enough. So bring the cash home so that we can live to fight another day. We'll see you on the next episode. See you guys. Peace.